In this video, I'll be talking about Planck's equation and how it relates to our study of quantum mechanics when it comes to chemistry. So, in the previous video, I introduced quantum mechanics by explaining frequency and wavelength, pretty much. And we came out with this formula, J equals to wavelength and frequency. You can write this as, a, as an F2, it's really the same. So now let's relate that to Planck's equation. So Planck's equation. Well, what what Max Planck said was that exchange between matter and energy occurs in packets called quanta so quanta so what he did was relate energy to our frequency and our wavelength so he came out with the equation E is equal to NHV and again this V is the same as as an F if you consider frequency with an F so as always let's break down our equation we have E equals NHV and our energy or our, our E is energy I already told you energy the N is what we call an integer quantity and it's usually one so integer And most likely it will be one so remember that number then we have our H H is Planck's constant so and it is it is equal to six point six two times ten to the negative thirty four joules times seconds not joules per second and finally our V is our frequency so a good way to remember the units of Planck's constant if you ever forget is you just break you just put on all the units like we know energy is in joules our N will have a it's just a number so it's just a one it doesn't have any unit then we have or H blank Planck's constant we'll call it X or whatever and finally we have frequency frequency is in heart in Hertz or one over second so you can just see that X is joules times second but you do have to remember that it is its number it's 6.62 times 10 to the negative 34 joules per, joules times second so now let's solve some problems using our previous equation and combine it with Planck's equation. So we have that copper, copper 1 chloride emits visible light having an energy of 4.41 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So we have our energy. Always write your data first. 4.41 times 10 to the negative 19 that is horrible <laughs> joules okay and they ask us for the wavelength of our copper chloride the, of the light of course so let's see they only give us the our energy so let's write our, our Planck our Planck's equation which involves energy and they want the wavelength so the equation that involves wavelength is C is equal to wavelength time frequency so just by relating this two frequencies you can solve for the wavelength so let's do equation two first and that is wavelength is C over V. Actually, I'm sorry. Yeah, 
you have to solve for v. So the the frequency is the speed of light over the wavelength. And now we can put it in our first in our equation one. So n h c over wavelength. I got one step ahead. So now you actually you, you solve for for wavelength. So this is very messy. I'm sorry. Wavelength is equal to n times h times c over e. That is the equation we're going to use. So now we have an equation. So let me erase all of this. So we don't need it anymore. And let's see what, using our data, what we have from that. We know we have the, our energy. I have said that the n will be equal to 1. So we have this. We have this. We're missing the h. The h is Planck's constant. So that, this looks like an n. 6.62 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times second and finally the last factor is our speed of light so c sorry, c is equal to 2.99 times 10 to the 8 meters per second so just by plugging in the values you get that the wavelength is uh, 4 Point five one times ten to the negative seven meters. So it's simply four hundred fifty one nanometers. If you want to make it look nice, <laughs> and that's how you solve a problem using Planck's equation combined with our previous equations of quantum mechanics.